All right, welcome back. Earlier on, I did say that we'll be talking about the International Day of Rural Women. It was commemorated on the 15th day of October, but of course, we're still in October. We just have a few hours uh, to the end of uh, this month. And uh, it is my pleasure to welcome Dr. Amensa, uh, Dr. Telma Mensa, a financial consultant and a women empowerment advocate. Dr. Mensa, thank you for joining us. Welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, let's get started. This, the, the theme uh, for this year's International Day for uh, Rural Women is uh, Rural Women Cultivating Good Food for All. How important uh, is this theme? Bearing in mind that most of the food we eat, even the good food, so to speak, that we eat, are produced by women. Yes, I think the theme couldn't have come at a better time than this. Just as you said, um, women contribute a lot to the food we eat. And looking at a quote I picked from the UN, um, one of the UN sites, it says that if women farmers had the same access to tools and credits, there will be up to 150 million fewer hungry people in the world. And that shows how important um, our women folks as far as farming and their contribution to economic development is concerned. And so yes, the theme is right, and it is at the right time. Mm. If, we, if we take a look at the role of women, uh, so to speak, uh, you, you're a Ghanaian, and you're speaking to me from Accra right now, the capital of Ghana. Speak to me about the experiences of rural women uh, in, in Ghana. Uh, let's share some experiences. Is it the same? as we have here in Nigeria. Of course, here in Nigeria, we see a lot of uh, women, rural women at that can, into farming practices. Can you practices. please repeat your question? I didn't hear that, sorry. Okay, my question to you is that, can you please share the experiences of Ghanaian rural women uh, for me, especially around food cultivation? Uh, and let's see if they are almost the same with that, with, with what we have here in Nigeria. Okay, so um, I think you're asking me about my experience with Ghanaian rural women yes. and how they cultivate their food. Yes. Okay, um, so I believe that um, the Ghanaian women, just like all the African women, they contribute to their food um, in the same way as all the African women do. But then I think um, with the current government, there's a flagship program called Planting for Food and Jobs, which according to the farmers, it's been a plus to the work they do. They get a lot of input. They get a lot of education. They get agriculture officers to come around to assist them with what they are doing. And so I think currently um, the Ghanaian rural women who are into um, farming, they are getting a much better um, at their operations since the input and the education and the support they are getting from the farmers. That is to say that um, the contribution of the rural women as far as agriculture and the economic development of the country is concerned is really, really top notch. That is how come they are giving them all the support and all the assistance they need so that they can get to where they want the country to get to with regards to um, food production for um, exportation and for local consumption as well. If we take a look at the month of October, it's quite significant, especially around food. The World Food Day is on the 17th day of October. Uh, the International Day for Rural Women, it's 15th day of October. Then I think the, the day also for eradicating poverty is also sometime in this, in this month, uh, uh, 15th, 17th of October. 16th of October is World, Food, is World Food Day. If we take a look at all this, how has it helped uh, to you know, change the fortunes of rural women? Since rural women are involved so much, in the production of food, has it really changed our fortune? Pardon me, Nancy, but um, my my internet seems a bit unstable. Um, okay, I, I didn't quite get your question. If you could repeat that. Okay, my question is: If we take a look at the different days revolving around food this month, 16th of October is World Food Day. 15th of October is International Day of the Rural Woman. Uh, 17th day of October is the day for eradicating poverty. If you take a look at all those days and the attention, especially on food, how do you think that these days or even the commemoration of these days have helped change the fortunes of rural women in Africa? Well, I believe um, it all goes to show how important food is for our daily survival. 
and we can't go without food. I mean, there was this funny um, video going on on social media which says that no matter what happens, make sure you eat first. And so looking at the month of October um, 15th and 16th, all talking about food, it goes to show how important food is for our daily survival. And also as um, a way of growing our economy, we, um, food forms a greater chunk of the things that we trade to raise money to um, develop our economy. Agriculture, we say, is the bedrock of development. And so we can't do away without food. In October is, let's say, we, that's as we are listed, we can say October is a month dedicated to food and to women as well. And then women are also in charge of cooking, apart from the rural farmers um, growing to produce to feed the agriculture sector and the industries as well. Women are also in charge of the cooking at home. And so we do a lot of the cooking. And so food and women, we go kind of hand in hand. And at the end of the day, women make sure that the food they feed their families and even the world at large with is nutritious. It's in line with what the standards are expecting. Now, now my question really is about women or rural women being social change agents. And how do you think that because we are so involved, the rural women are so involved in food production. Do you think it has changed the economic, uh, uh, you know, the, the economic prowess of women, at least in the last few years? Has it really changed? Because we're seeing that most of these rural women still indulge in, uh, um. you know, old farming practices. Forgive me, Nancy, but I am trying to reposition myself. Okay, to okay, you know what we're going to do. I didn't write your last question. You, you know what we're going to do? Let me let, just let, see if, um... Yes, let's quickly take a break. And when we come back, uh, during the break, we'll try to see if the connection will be better. Uh, and the second guest will join me right here at the table. So, uh, Dr. Mensah, just hold on. We'll be coming back to you. The outbreak of COVID-19 changed the world and unsettled our economy. As we adapt to this unprecedented reality and start the journey towards recovery, the African Economic Congress invites you to a televised and virtual event that will bring together innovative leaders from all sectors of the African economy. It will be a platform where sustainable solutions that enhance the African economy will be discussed. Themed, Accelerate Africa, Building Back Better, date November 1 to 3rd, 2021. For sponsorship or further inquiries, contact us at events at aecongress.org or call us at plus 234-906-691-2600 or plus 234-907-370-3649 to attend, register at www.aecongress.org. Join us as we take the first step towards strengthening the African economy to create the Africa we want. All right, welcome back to the program. In case you're just joining us, we're looking at the contribution of rural women to food production and overall economic development. I have with me here at the table Dr. Regina Inem. She's the founder and executive director of Regamos, 
Foundation. Welcome to you, my man. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. Um, just before you uh, came in, uh, I've been chatting with uh, Dr. Telma Mensa. Uh, she's a financial consultant and a woman uh, uh, empowerment advocate. And we've been talking, we started the topic actually. Uh, but Dr. Mensa, can, can you hear me now? If I come to uh, Dr. Inem. Dr. Mensa, are you there? Can you hear me? Okay, we'll come back to Dr. Mensa in a bit. How significant, let me get your own view because Dr. Mensa also told me <laughs> what her view is on how the significance of rural women, you know, uh, in uh, food, cultivating our food. The theme for this year is rural women cultivating good food for all. So not just cultivating food, but cultivating good food. Without food, we won't be here. Absolutely. Yeah, so how significant is that? I would say, um, the economy of any country is highly dependent on the woman. The woman produces our food. Most food produced uh, uh, um, in the farms in the rural areas are produced majorly by women. And when you not talk about the um, um, fishing part of it, most women are fishermen in the Niger Delta area and in the, in, in the River Rhine area. So women their contribution to the economy is highly significant. And without them, I will tell you, there will be hunger in the land. Mm. Yes. There will be hunger in the land. Yes. Do you think that, at least for the Nigerian government, uh, uh, I would ask Dr. Mensah that. Okay, I think she answered it a bit when I asked her because she said there's a program in Ghana, which I know of too, planting for jobs. In fact, they call their own agricultural minister, Minister of Food and Agriculture. <laughs> That's what the minister <laughs> uh, for our own is, Minister of Agriculture and Rural Development. So do you think that our government realizes the importance of women's contribution to food production or to even to the larger agricultural sector? I think um, the government recognizes agriculture. However, they are not very particular about um, having more women involvement or looking at the women that are already involved empowering them to produce more and you know building their capacity for them to do better so the government is not very very particular about um, um, developing women in uh, agriculture and if you look at even the funds availability you see that a lot of men get funds for those that are in agriculture but a lot of women don't why don't we get funds why now a typical man is rugged and um are able to meet the requirements most times. A lot of women, they don't have, you, you know, for you to get funds, they'll say bring that collateral, bring that uh, uh, um, capital and all that. And you know our culture does not allow us to own lands. Even when our fathers they are distributing the inheritance, they don't give to the women. And though the law, law is changing, but a lot of families are not yet receptive to that part of it. And even with the woman also, the, uh, that is married, the husband must give approval before they can use the land piece for collateral. And if the husband doesn't um, approve, so they can't get the loan. So I think um, culture-wise, uh, the, the, the culture does not support women um, ownership of landed properties and most times bank ask for these collaterals and a lot of women are unable to produce this. Is there a model that governments across Africa, let me put it that way, because since Dr. Mensah is also uh, on this interview talking about African rural women, is there a model that governments can, you know, initiate that, you know, would really make women advance, rural women that are producing this food or rural women in agriculture, and it can make us advance. Because I know that there could be separate programs. For example, in Nigeria, I think some years ago, under Okonjo Iweala, for example, there were some um, initiatives that were done, and there were like funds, 60% of it would be basically for women, things like that. Should it be escalated uh, so that more women can gain from these initiatives? Yes, I think we should have more programs like that. Having funds, you know, a percentage of women having access to funds, a percentage of women having access to trainings, because also it's not all about the funds. They should be able to have trainings mm -hmm. to expand. Then 
um, those women that are into uh, um, agri uh, produce, having the roads, you know, sometimes when these women actually produces this crop, they sell at peanut prices. And the middleman comes into the village, buy and will sell in very high prices. So accessibility to transportation, there should be maybe like a cooperative or a, a program that supports women, uh, th th that is the, the, the supply chain of food from rural areas to city. It will have specific uh, uh, programs that support women, it will be, it will be nice. You're not talking about even the uh, uh, international trade part of it, because I'm also involved in international trade. Now, you see that a lot of the crops, a lot of the produce being exported comes from the rural women. Mm. The rural woman, woman is not benefiting in any way from international trade because people come, they buy and sell at exorbitant prices mm -hmm. and give them peanuts yeah. and they remain in ab abject poverty. So what can be done there? Because, you know, it's a very, very dicey issue what, what you've uh, brought up and not even just about rural women now. Farmers, globe, uh, farmers at least in Africa, you see what is happening. I think in Ghana, for example, they are changing that, especially like in cocoa because you know that when you get this product and you are involved in international trade you sell them at exorbitant prices for those that can process you get additional value added you know but for those that cannot you just buy from the farmers or even the rural women now in this case and they are giving peanuts as you have said what can really be done how can we you how can we stop that is it possible and if we can who, whose responsibility is it, is it? Because we shouldn't also be talking about rural women, rural women. These women should also be able to be empowered. They can send their children to school. They can have the good things of life if they choose to. If they even choose to remain in the rural areas, they should also live well. Now, the rural women are in communities. These communities are governed by local governments. So if we break this into the community level, the local government level, will be able to reach these women. Because most times what happens is that there's this fantastic uh, agri programs nationally and um, so much of ad advertisement, we talk so much in the social media campaigns, but does this really trickle down to the women in the rural area? That is the question we're gonna ask ourselves because it doesn't. Mm. It doesn't. So getting the rural people involved, like the women leaders, the market women, the, 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 maybe the wife of the, the chief of that community, you know, that is a farmer also, will be best. Because if we just bring out projects, fantastic projects, and we, we, we don't allow it to trickle down into the, uh, into the local areas, it will not benefit us. We'll still be having this white elephant project and um, no result comes out from it. Okay. Um, I will come over to Dr. Mensa now. Dr. Mensa, I hope you can hear us now. Uh, we've been joined uh, by Dr. Enem. Yes, we've been joined by Dr. Enem. Uh, before we take the next report, I want you to share with me the Ghanaian experience and perhaps, like I, I was telling Dr. Elliot here, that I know that the Minister of Agriculture in Ghana is called the Minister of Food first, Minister of Food and Agriculture. I've forgotten his name now. He's also a doctor. I think, uh, you know, he's worked in some yeah, international... Yes, he's worked in some international organizations. So speak to me about the experience of uh, uh, the rural women in Ghana around cultivating food. And if indeed the policies of government in Ghana really get to the grassroots, just like doctor here is saying that we've not really seen government policies going down to the bottom of the pyramid to touch the rural women. Okay, so um, on that of policy, I am not sure there is a policy in place just for women. It's been on general agriculture, but then the women are also um, factored in one way or the other. But then, um, just as Dr. Regina was saying, I believe that in Ghana here, we've been talking about affirmative action which is looking at having more women into um, politics and leadership roles. And I believe that if such an action can be um, spread to cut across the agriculture sector so that women are given priority so that they can do what they do best. One thing about women is that we know how to multiply. And so give a woman one seed, 
in the next year you are going to get about 10 bags or 20 bags women are really committed to the things they do and so i believe that if the affirmative action um, is replicated in the agriculture sector and special attention and support is given to women our agricultural products be it for local consumption or for exports will quadruple in the next two or three years i can bet you on that and so on that i can say that um maybe based on this conversation i can take this up since i'm a woman's empowerment advocate and look at how to get the government and the ministry of agriculture in ghana to look at an affirmative action for rural women in agriculture and in farming so that it is not just about politics and leadership but also in agriculture and farming our rural women are also being given the support and the not and the push they need so that they can get ahead of them and because i know for sure that women are very committed to what we do and we do it best mm. so gender is a critical form uh, for us to achieve economic efficiency whether we like it or not <laughs> we can't be economically efficient if the other part of the gender is not really included dr mensa i'll come back to you in a bit but let's exactly. quickly launch Let's quickly launch this report done uh, by Emmanuel Aldo on uh, rural women contribution to food production. Throughout history, the central role of women in society has ensured the stability, progress, and long-term development of nations. Globally, women comprise 43% of the world's agricultural labor force, rising from 70% in some countries. For instance, across Africa, 80% of agricultural production comes from small farmers, most of whom are rural women. It's widely accepted that agriculture can be the engine of growth and poverty reduction in developing countries. Women, notably mothers, play the largest role in decision making about family meal planning and diet. And women self report for more often the initiative in preserving child health and nutrition. Established by the United Nations General Assembly in its resolution in December 2007, this year's International Day recognizes the critical role and contribution of rural women, including indigenous women, in enhancing agricultural and rural development, improving food security, and eradicating rural poverty. No doubt, rural women and girls play essential roles in food system, from production to processing, preparation, consumption, and distribution of food, and as well as in securing household and community nutrition. Yet, unequal power relations between women and men in the household and society, discriminating gender norms and practices, prevalent violence against women and girls, and their disproportionate share of unpaid care and domestic work result in unequal access to food and heightened experience of hunger, malnutrition, undernutrition, and food insecurity. The COVID-19 pandemic along the climate and environmental crises have compiled food insecurity in many parts of the world. Significant loss of income and limited access to social protection for this problem. Approximately 2.37 billion people did not have access to adequate food in 2020, an increase of almost 20% people in just one year. Rural women and girls are disproportionately impacted by food insecurity. Rural women are, however, in various capacity, leading movements advocating for more agroecological approaches and creating local strategies for crop diversity and improved soil, water, and pest management that help households increase income and food security. Today, UA women are calling on partners everywhere to build on this momentum and galvanize efforts to advance rural women's voice and agencies, their livelihood, rights, and resilience to ensure that they can continue to cultivate good food for all. Emmanuel Haldi reporting for Moneyline with Nancy. Okay, if I take it from where Emmanuel stopped, uh, in that report, uh, the Dr. Inem, let's take a look at, because we're trying to share experiences here, uh, I do know that in Latin America, as well as uh, the Caribbean, about one quarter of their population are considered obese. <laughs> mm. Yes, are considered obese. And even in that, in those regions, we do know that malnutrition, obesity, anemia, overweight, uh, for their population being overweight, cost them about 3% of their GDP. Where am I really driving to? We know that women are critical in food production globally, not just in, in, in Africa. How important is it that women should be able, or rural women should be able to cultivate good food to ensure food and nutritional security? Because it's also one thing to cultivate food, is another thing to cultivate good food. And I think that's why the theme of this year is very apt. 
Now, um, it's very important we have um, agric extension officers go into rural areas. I know that they do, and um, while I was um, younger, um, they do a lot of radio programs on how to use improved um, um, variety of crops or seedlings to uh, propagate their crops. So I would say uh, it is important to um, grow very good food. And um, the use of uh, extension offices in rural areas is very, very vital. And this can be incorporated into the local government areas also because I know in the um, local government, they have a desk for agriculture and all that. So it's getting um, the local government involved in food production in the communities. So this will go a long way because actually good food, planting good food is quite important. Mm. I know now they use a lot of, um, um, for cassava, I, mm. I know um, the, the, the southeastern and the south-south, there's this species of cassava that is being planted now that is quite robust and um, have, um, uh, and grows very fast. So we could have more of that in other crops also. Mm. So it's very important. Okay, Dr. Mensa, I hope you're still there. And let's talk about the essence yes. of the adoption of technologies. Modern technologies, I must say, among rural women and among female producers of food. How important is it that perhaps we need to incentivize the adoption of technology? I would say it is very, very important because right now we find ourselves in the fourth industrial revolution where everything is all about technology. And so farming cannot be taken out of the technology space. And so it is very, very important that um, rural women farmers are also introduced to the technological aspect of production. It's rather unfortunate that most of our rural folks are not as educated as they are but I believe that it is not too late. Giving them um, education on how best to use technology in their production is highly, in fact, it is, it is too late to be even talking about it right now. Because as it stands now, technology, the world is all about technology and agriculture and farming cannot be taken out. And so, just as I mentioned earlier on, um, with the flagship program of our government here, I have seen um, a lot of the youth going into agriculture now and there is a belief that in the next 20 or 30 years if you don't own some farmland or some form of um, agricultural production your income is going to be reduced and so that has sunk in very well with people and the youth are getting involved including the women and i believe that when the younger ones are also introduced into the farming as they are doing since they are more a bit technologically inclined it will help us um, propagate the technology agenda so that it trickles down to our rural women for them to also make use of technology in their production. Sorry, okay. I, I would okay. like to add here. Yeah. Now, before we begin to talk about using technology in agriculture, we, see, we have to first talk about these women embracing technology itself in day-to-day -day life. Because if they are not digitally literate in any form, we can't even bring in um, um, technology in agriculture that we are talking about. Now, you know, she, she mentioned something about um, the youth embracing agriculture. The reverse is the case here. Mm. We have a lot of um, youth leaving the rural area for urban areas. And this is actually going to affect food production. And the women are left in the farms alone because they, they have to um, pay workers and all that. The able-bodied youth are out in urban areas. So I, I, I see um, a, a food shortage soon if this is not arrested in the country. You know, you know, Doctor, you, you, you brought it out from my mouth. And in fact, when Dr. Mensah was speaking, that was even my next question, because today we're talking about rural women. In the next 10, 20, 30 years time, would we also talk about rural women? Because perhaps this phase of rural women may have passed or they are not able to produce food. Will we continue to get rural women or it will not be urban women in urban centers producing food? food? Or would it be urban women moving to rural areas and owning rural lands to produce food? So how can we even balance that act? Should, should this be a deliberate, yes. a deliberate strategy? Yes. Um, when Dr. Telma was talking, she talked about every youth, everyone wanting to have 
there would have been a kind of campaign, a, literacy, uh, a, a kind of sensitization that would have made the people embrace this. So I think there should be a deliberate sensitization by the government into all the forms of governance in the country, informing that, oh, it's good to embrace agriculture and getting not only the, the, the rural women, even the rural girls involved, mm. interested in agriculture. Because I tell you, if you ask any rural girl today, would you want to be, to, you know, be a farmer? They don't even go near the farms. <laughs> They don't go near the farms. So I think the sensitization will go a long way, you know, to making uh, um, um, uh, uh, the rural girls and youth interested. There's this um, tech talk I listened to about making agriculture sexy. So yeah. I think it is time to make agriculture sexy, sexy in Nigeria. Mm. <laughs> or perhaps in Africa, since in we're Africa. not just talking about uh, <laughs> Nigeria today. Yes. Um, Dr. Telma, Dr. Mensa. How do we make agriculture sexy? And sexy in the right way now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah, sexy in the right way. No, that it, um, it, it could be sexy. Yes, it could be sexy so that you can make money and you can make good money. I met, uh, I was with a, a friend, okay, on Monday, and he did tell me, he's a man, he did tell me, oh, Nancy, I asked him, how are you doing? He did tell me, oh, he's fine that he's entered into agriculture now. I said, fantastic. I said, there is money in agriculture. He told me, he told me, he said, Nancy, I wish I had entered earlier, that I'm making so much money. He told me that on Monday, a man. So I'm just trying to relate it to what we're saying now. So how can we make it sexy for women to continue <laughs> or for, to get new women into agriculture? Yes, you can actually wear your boots and go through lines and, you know, yeah. plant cassava, get people, and you make money. Yeah. Exactly what came to mind when Dr. Um, Regina mentioned making agriculture sexy. But I'm thinking that um, so in order to make it sexy, as she's saying, we shouldn't um, quote unquote put agriculture in such a context that it looks as if it is meant for only the rural folks. Mm. But then we should make it attractive such that even if you are not going um, to do large scale agricultural production for um, export, you can do something like growing what you eat. Have a backyard garden, you know, where you can, maybe on a Saturday morning, you wake up, you put on your nice um, T-shirt and some short um, jeans, um, shorts, or some hot pants. Carry your kids <laughs> along and then, you know, go to your garden and do one or two things. And I must confess that um, I belong to one um, platform where it's all about gardening and growing and it's amazing how young people on that platform are growing um, food in their backgrounds and all of that and it's so interesting looking at the kind of education that goes on on that platform and trust me personally i have not um, i've never been a fan of growing stuff or going into agriculture not because um i i see it as something below my level but it is something I wasn't used to growing up. I never had the opportunity to get that exposure. And so it doesn't really come to me, but I really find it very beautiful when I see my fellow females um, doing that. And so because of that, I have, I have started um, buying some, you know, um, plants and seedlings just to grow in my backyard. And so, as I said, if we introduce our young ones to it at that tender age, they will get the exposure. And as they grow up, they would want to do it. And so it's not all about wearing um, the long, um, those agricultural boots with those tattered clothes. And no, no, no. Get up in the morning, put on a nice t shirt with your hot pants, and a with boot. your nice slippers, and carry and your boots along on a Saturday morning, even if you yes. have a backyard garden. I believe with that, it will trickle down and it will make agriculture sexy and sexy. very attractive, just as we are saying. And I think on that note, we end the interview. So let's make it sexy, you know. Let's <laughs> make <laughs> agriculture sexy so that more women can cultivate good food for all. Talking of backyard, I do also have a backyard in my house where I also plant you know, my green vegetables and all of that, you know, comes from there. So I think that's the much we can take on today's edition of the program. I hope we'll have some time again to discuss this. Thank you very much for I come in. I've been speaking with Dr. Telma Mensa, a financial consultant and a women empowerment advocate. Thank you, Dr. Mensa, joining us from Accra. Thank you, despite the challenges we had earlier. Dr. Regina Enem, founder, executive director of the Foundation. Thank you, Doctor.
Thank so you doctor so was here. So beautiful. <laughs> and on that good note, we end today's show. And indeed, this week, thank you all for uh, joining us. Be the best you can be and be the change that you want to see. I am Nancy Naji. Have a fantastic weekend, everyone. Bye now. Thank you.